Hello everyone, in this video we'll be covering the functionality of the flight level change mode on the autopilot here in the default G1172 in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. So this mode here is, I would say, one of the most common ways that you would find yourself using the autopilot for a climb or descent, so let's get started. Before you take off, if you're planning to use the autopilot after takeoff especially, you'll want to make sure you have an altitude selected. This would be called the altitude window, so we'll set initially 2,000 feet as our target altitude. So we'll go ahead and take off and then use flight level change to perform our climb. So let's take the parking brake off, press F on our keyboard to get back to our default view, and here we go. Smoothly applying full power, right rudder to keep us on the runway center line, temperature and pressure in the green. Airspeed alive. Be rotating at 55 knots. 55, pulling back. Around seven and a half degrees seems to work well to maintain a normal climb speed. Okay, so I'm, I've used my trim to help keep our pitch attitude at about seven and a half degrees, which is the tick mark right here. And that gives us around 74 knots, which is our best rate of climb speed. At this point, we can get right to it and put the autopilot on. So I'll hit the AP button. And we see initially the autopilot will engage in the wings level mode and the pitch hold mode. but since the purpose of this video is flight level change, let's go ahead and transition to the flight level change mode and see what happens. So flight level change mode, we now see in green FLC, and we also see a speed in green to the right of that, which is 79 knots. The basic principle of the flight level change mode is that the airplane will do whatever it takes with the pitch attitude in order to maintain the selected speed. So in this case, it's working to maintain 79 knots. Since our selected altitude is 2,000 feet, the airplane will level off for us very shortly at 2,000 feet and transition to an altitude capture and altitude hold mode, so we'll see that very shortly. First, let's look at, though, if we change our speed, let's say we increase our selected speed to 90 knots. By the way, these, these buttons here in uh, Flight Sim 2020 appear to be flipped because nose up should actually produce a slower speed. But what we see is we've selected 90 knots, so the airplane it pitched down to accelerate to 90 knots, and then it pitched back up to maintain 90 knots. Now if we want to go slower, this time we'll go ahead and uh, hit the nose down button to go slower. Let's go to, let's say, 74 knots. We see the airplane will pitch up to get to 74 knots. Although at this point, it thinks it's time for us to start leveling off at 2,000 feet, so it's no longer going to try to target that speed specifically. It's going to prioritize leveling off at 2,000 feet. So in any le level off, whether you're hand flying the airplane or if the autopilot is flying the airplane, I like to think of it in three steps. Pitch, power, and then trim. So right now the airplane is pitching down, as you can see. Here's our horizon line, we're pitching closer to the horizon, which is reducing our vertical speed. Once the airspeed has built up to around where we would like it to be, I'd say around here is good, we'll reduce the power. So I'm going to set, uh, let's say, 2300 RPM. And the next step is trim. So when the autopilot is on, the autopilot is doing the trimming for you. So if you watch this wheel closely, you'll see it is trimming a little bit. Not a whole lot of trim required, but it is doing that job for us that we would otherwise have to do manually. So that's the basic functionality of flight level change during a climb. So let's just take a moment here, we'll change our heading to get away from the built up area of Seattle. So let's center up our heading bug, turn the airplane slightly left, and hit heading, so this will be descending here. Okay, so next up we'd like to look at a descent using flight level change. So. The first step will be to select the altitude that we want to go to. In this case, we want a uh, thousand feet selected, for our example, so we'll select a thousand feet. And notice, the airplane doesn't immediately start descending to a thousand feet. The airplane will continue 
to respect or maintain the altitude that it was in during the altitude hold phase. So in this case, it's continuing to maintain 2,000 feet until we change to a different vertical mode, either vertical speed or flight level change. And today, of course, we're using flight level change. So I'm going to go ahead and push flight level change. And what we see here is that still the airplane doesn't climb or descend. And the reason for that is because, remember, flight level change only cares about maintaining whatever speed we have selected. In this case, 104 knots. We're already at 104 knots, so the airplane sees no need to change its pitch attitude, no need to climb or descend. So what we have to do next is to change our power setting so that we'll force the airplane to descend. So initially, let's go to a kind of the extreme. We'll go to idle power and you'll notice the airplane will begin to pitch down so that it will maintain 104 knots. So it's going to be quite aggressive. Now this doesn't have to be an all or nothing thing. So let's say we want to maintain an intermediate descent rate, maybe somewhere around 500 feet per minute. We can increase the throttle and you'll see the airplane will pitch up so that we maintain the selected speed still and you'll see our, our rate of descent will be a little bit less aggressive. So. If I can get it just right, it should be around 500 feet per minute is what I'm looking for. And there you have it. So it's just modulating the pitch. The real goal is to maintain that speed right at 104. But the side effect of us increasing the power is that it's using a lower rate of descent in order to accomplish that 104 knot speed restriction. So if we continue on here, we'll notice that the airplane will level off here at a thousand feet. I'll just uh, speed it up a little bit by reducing our power. So not exactly speeding it up, but just to help it descend more quickly to get to our target altitude and finally level off. And just like for the level off from the climb for a descent, we also want to remember pitch, power, trim. So the autopilot is going to pitch the airplane up as we get closer to our selected altitude. Now we want to put the power back in, otherwise our speed will continue to decay. So I'm gonna go back to 2300 RPM. Okay, and then trim, like we mentioned before, the autopilot is taking care of that. You can see the small movements of the trim wheel here. That's being done by servos that are controlled by the autopilot. So there you have it. Now let's do one more example of a climb. Uh, let's say that we want to climb up to 1500 feet in flight level change. So I'm going to go ahead and push flight level change. And we, let's put full power. Now we don't necessarily need full power because we're only climbing up by 500 feet. But just for keeping the example simple, we'll use full power. Okay, and now let's say we've had enough of the climb, we want to descend back down to 1,000 feet. So I'm going to set 1,000 feet. It still thinks we're going to 1,500, so we have to hit flight level change again and hit it twice, and now it's going to go back into a descent mode based on the 1,000 feet we have selected. So with power idle, we'll see what ends up happening. Now I want to show you guys a really important consideration here, which is flight level change has no control over the auto throttle, or excuse me, no control over the throttle period. So if we forget for whatever reason to increase the throttle during a level off like this, we could very easily stall the airplane. So you see here the airplane is pitching up to level off at a thousand feet, which is great, but it's no longer respecting that speed because now we're in altitude capture mode as opposed to flight level change. So if we don't put the power in, the airplane will just keep getting slower and slower and slower. And I think you guys can probably guess what's happening next. Stall. Stall. It's a stall. stall. So let's stall. get that power in. I'm going to disconnect the autopilot, stall. get the nose down. Stall. And I think we're recovered OK now. Stall. It's a little bit sensitive. But there you have it. You can see one of the most important things about using flight level change in a descent is remembering to increase the power 
once you're in that level up because there's nothing that's going to do it for you. Same thing will go if you're leveling off from a descent and vertical speed mode. Well, that wraps up our video for today, guys. So I hope you enjoyed that. And if you have any questions or if you need any help using the autopilot in Flight Simulator 2020 or any other functionality, please feel free to contact me through my website, flightsimcoach.com. I specialize in offering professional one-on-one -on -one coaching to meet your needs, whether that be as a simulator enthusiast or if you're using Flight Simulator to work towards any sort of a pilot certificate in the real world, I am a certified flight instructor and former airline pilot, and I'm able to help people achieve their goals using their flight simulators at home remotely. So thanks for watching and see you next time.